Okay, I'll do my own introduction. Hello, uh, my name is uh, Amira Aroni. Uh, I work in the Wikimedia Foundation uh, in the internationalization team. Uh, this will basically more or less show you uh, what our team does and uh, what our resources are for what we do and what are the reasons for what we do. Yeah, so, uh, well, you know, uh, you all know what the Miki Wikimedia Foundation does. Uh, uh, sharing all the knowledge, collecting it and sharing it. Uh, all knowledge comes in all languages and uh, uh, this number that we usually cite, which is uh, 7,000, uh, 7,000 is taken from the uh, ISO standard uh, of languages of about which I shall talk in a few minutes. Uh, we need to translate everything as far as we're concerned. Uh, everything can be translated to any language. Everything, everything useful should be translated to every language. Uh, it must be possible, and we make it possible. We obviously cannot do the translation work ourselves. We're just a few people. But we are making it possible. Um, so uh, when we write, we need a script. So uh, many of you are probably uh, accustomed to the Latin script for English and for many other languages. Uh, other languages need uh, different scripts. Uh, the scripts of India are more or less supported in computers with various problems. Uh, however, uh, there are some scripts uh, that are not even encoded in Unicode yet. Does everybody know what Unicode is? Is there anybody who doesn't know what Unicode is? Don't, don't be shy. Okay, everybody knows what Unicode is. Okay. Uh, some languages are encoded in Unicode. Now, if, if they're encoded, it means that the character has a number. But it doesn't actually mean uh, that everybody can see that character uh, on their computers. And it doesn't actually mean that uh, everybody can see that character correctly, because maybe he kind of has the technology and the, the operating system sorry, supports it, but there are bugs and he doesn't actually see the character correctly. Uh, and even Unicode itself is not complete. There are still scripts, quite a lot of them, which are not encoded in Unicode at all, which are still at the proposal stages. Uh, they will be encoded one day, uh, not by us, by uh, the Unicode Consortium uh, uh, itself. Uh, we are working with the Unicode Consortium. Uh, we recently started very close contact with them. We were probably going to make it deeper. Um, uh, there are still scripts which are not in Unicode. Uh, uh, so we are actually lazy because uh, we want to reuse existing standards. Uh, not, uh, now that was a, a half joke, not, not just because we're lazy, but because we just want to do things right. So one example of uh, why we want to do things right and we are just waiting a bit there is for example sign languages for the deaf uh, there is apparently a way to write these languages in writing uh, several dictionaries were published in this it, it's called sign writing but it's not in unicode yet it's being discussed so uh, yeah yeah it's it's possible to write it apparently somebody hmm? yeah they're, they're able to write in english but 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 um, sign language is actually separate from English. It's 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 another language with with its own set of words, which are not spoken by your mouth but shown by your hands, and it it's it's a separate language, uh, and it has its own writing. Uh, it's not encoded in Unicode yet. It's being discussed by Unicode. Uh, we receive requests to open uh, Wikipedia's in such languages. Uh, we cannot currently do this. We, we are. Not that we don't like these languages, we just cannot do this uh, because it's not in Unicode yet. But we are working with Unicode. Uh, as soon as it will be there, we, we will be fine with creating such a project. Uh, we uh, also, yes. How is there a Wikipedia in languages that are not Unicode? So no, that's what I'm talking about. It's 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 currently impossible. Uh, it's we. 
if, if it's not in Unicode, we, we just cannot do this. Uh, because if we do it not in Unicode, that's just not right. Because one day it will be in Unicode, and then we'll have to convert it somehow. And we, it, this is just something that we should not plan. This is just not right. Uh, so we are waiting for the standards, uh, and we use the standards whenever we can. Um, Furthermore, uh, there are some things that the standards give us, some things that the standards don't give us. So, um, for example, plural. Um, in English, we have singular and plural. So one is singular, and anything that is not one is plural. In uh, Russian, there are not two forms, but three. Uh, in Arabic, there are even more. There, in Arabic, there are four or five forms, and there may be languages with even more forms than that. It depends on the number. Uh, so. Uh, in uh, MediaWiki, we just uh, wrote the code ourselves to support it. So basically, in, in many, many, many computer programs, you will just see something uh, not quite correct grammatically uh, in other languages. Uh, in MediaWiki, we care about such things, and we fix such bugs. If, if you see, any, uh, if you see any translation in Wikipedia into your language, and you see that there's a grammatical mistake in the translation, uh, it's, a, it's, it's a bug. It's a bug that our team is supposed to fix. Uh, we also support uh, gender. Uh, I will not go deeply into that. There's, there's a whole separate talk about uh, that uh, later in Wikimania. But basically, it's possible to uh, write uh, interface messages according to uh, the user, whether the user is male or female. Uh, it's in your preferences. Check it. Uh, uh, you can. Um, you can select whether you're male or female. You will not see it in English, but in other languages, you will see it. Uh, and yes, for some languages, we also have uh, um, formal versions. Uh, we have it for for uh, German and for Dutch, uh, I believe, and for okay. usted. I, I uh, yeah, that's that's yeah. In Spanish, it would be usted. I don't know whether we have a formal whether we have a formal version of Spanish, but it's technically possible. If anybody requests for that. Um, so uh, we support the language in the software. Uh, it must also be supported uh, uh, in, in our server software. It must also be supported by the client. So uh, I mean, we can have a wonderful uh, Wikipedia with 100,000 article, articles in some language of uh, India, like uh, Telugu or something. Uh, but uh, a person in India will not be able to read that language uh, because he doesn't have a font. Uh, so he will just see squares. Uh, so we send a web font. Web font is again a standard. It's a, it's a part of the HTML standard supported by uh, all major browsers. Uh, since December, uh, we have support for web fonts uh, in uh, most languages of India, and we are gradually expanding that. Uh, N not for all languages currently. Uh, as far as we're concerned, we can support all of them. We have this limitation that we use only uh, free software fonts, uh, which are licensed uh, in a way that is compatible with Wikipedia, which is supposed to be the GPL license or the OFL license or something like that. Do you make fonts? No, we don't make we don't make the fonts uh, ourselves. It may change in the future. We currently don't know. Currently, we we take uh, available fonts that were already made. So uh, in um, modern uh, Linux distributions like Ubuntu and Fedora, uh, they already come with quite a lot of fonts for many languages, for many languages of India, for many languages of Africa. Uh, so we can basically take them because they are free software already. For some languages, we still don't have fonts. For some languages, we have fonts, but the quality of the font is not so good. It's not so readable. So we don't force people to, to, to read it that way. Uh, we are working on ways to improve the font itself so it will be more readable. Uh, okay, uh, so the as I, as, I, as I said, we use standards whenever we can. So uh, ISO 6393, uh, it's a wonderful number. It's a very important number. You should remember it. It's a very useful list. Uh, probably maybe not the most scientifically precise, but the most comprehensive list uh, of languages uh, available. Uh, it has about uh, 7,000 languages, including uh, ancient extinct languages. Uh, and 
that's that's where we usually take the number seven thousand. So we have Wikipedia's in uh, almost three hundred languages. We have some level of support for four hundred languages in the software. Uh, so we 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 are not even we are ne not even uh, getting close to 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 covering half of the languages that are in the world. Um, that's 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 our perspective. For for lots of people, they say, oh well. There are like maybe 10 or 20 major languages in the world and supporting them is enough. Not for us. Uh, we want to support all of them. Um, yeah, well, uh, this, this, uh, the US keyboard layout, um, uh, we currently give some support for typing in different languages. There again, there, there will be uh, a whole talk later about that by Santosh. Uh, we basically use the US uh, keyboard layout, uh, and we can convert uh, the, the US keyboard layout into uh, characters in basically any language. We have support for most languages of India. We have support for Amharic, language of Ethiopia, uh, for Cyrillic, <coughs> and for quite a lot of other languages. And we can add new languages. We can also add Latin-based languages, for example, uh, uh, Native American and uh, African languages. The, many of them are written in Latin script, but with a lot of unusual characters and uh, critical marks. So we can add that too. We can, we can add support for that. So you wouldn't have to install any fonts on your computer, wouldn't have to install um, any additional keyboard lines you know, on your computer. Just ask us about that. Just send us a list of characters that your language needs, and we'll do that. Um, uh, OK, uh, now the CL, uh, CLDR, that's a, a bit a um, scary thing. The CLDR is a, a very big database of uh, information about languages. It's maintained by the same organization as Unicode. Uh, C CLDR is the Common Local Data Repository. That's a scary name. Basically, what it means is that it's a list of information about languages in potentially all languages. So what kind of information about languages? Uh, names of months in all languages, the 12 months. Uh, not just for the uh, usual uh, Gregorian car calendar that we use, but for other calendars too. So you can, f for example, in the CLDR, you can find um, the names of the months in the Persian calendar, uh, how they are written in Swedish. Uh, and of course, names like January, February, etc. Uh, names of all currencies, so you have names of all currencies in potentially all languages there. Um, you have plural rules, so uh, whenever possible we use the plural rules that are already found in CLDR, the, what, the, what I mentioned earlier about the different plural forms. This is more or less covered by the CLDR. We found bugs in the CLDR, uh, which we are going to report. Uh, but whenever possible, we take this from the CLDR. Whenever we find bugs, we just implement it ourselves. Uh, and uh, well, uh, there are also people who don't use the US keyboard. Uh, uh, for example, in Russia, the default would be not the English keyboard, but the Russian keyboard. And if you want to write some language of Russia, uh, the default should probably be the Russian keyboard. Uh, we haven't received requests about that yet, but we probably will. And when we shall receive requests about that, we will uh, do that. Uh, is there anybody here who speaks Russian? Nimnoshka. Uh, OK, it's, it's a bit of a shame that there's nobody who speaks Russian, but OK, ne never mind. Uh, but anyway, there are many languages inside Russia. Uh, the, the, like the major, the second major second language for them is Russian. So they would probably prefer the Russian keyboard. We can do that. We haven't done it yet, but we can do that if, if people just ask us. Uh, and we really, we try to fix the standards ourselves. We try uh, uh, as much as possible to first fix the standards and then implement them. Uh, whenever it's really urgent, we, we, we do some kind of an override ourselves. Um, but uh, we try to do that. We also urge you uh, to speak with standards organizations in your countries. Uh, if, for example, uh, your language doesn't have a keyboard uh, that supports your language completely, or if you think that uh, you, you want to type in your language and you see that uh, it's not really convenient and some characters are missing or it, you, you don't feel efficient, you have to 
press too many buttons just to get one letter, uh, please speak to the standards organization uh, in your country. Uh, it, it, it actually works. Uh, we have experience with that. Uh, they listen and they update the standards. The process may be bureaucratic. It may take a year or two, but eventually it happens. Uh, so you can do this. This is like uh, I'm trying to do crowdsourcing here. Uh, so you can do this yourself. Uh, if you're not sure how to do this, please speak to us about that too. Uh, we have contacts with uh, international standards organizations, with national standards organizations. Uh, we try to do that. Uh, and uh, well, to, to sum it up, it's the sum of all knowledge, uh, and uh, the languages themselves are knowledge, and uh, all knowledge is available to all people only if it's available in all languages. Uh, we try to uh, make it available to everybody. We uh, are actually making it available if you just ask us for the right things because we just cannot know everything ourselves. But please ask us and we'll do it. Uh, thank you. Uh, any questions? Uh, but, uh, by the way, uh, the, the, the next session will be a whole Q&A session with the whole of our team. So if you just uh, have questions about this particular thing, this is the time. But if you have some other general questions about language support, just a few minutes from now, there will be a Q&A session with the whole of our team. Any questions in particular about this? Yes. Um, you didn't mention that most of continental Western Europe uses the Azati keyboard. That's true. Uh, that's true. Question? Yeah, so uh, uh, the US keyboard layout is very popular <laughs> around the world, uh, but it's not the only Latin keyboard layout th there is. Uh, many European countries, uh, like Germany and France, they have slightly different placement of characters. Uh, in some countries, it's even completely different. I know that there's a Latvian keyboard layout, which is Latin, but completely different. Um, we can support it if anybody asks us. Um, uh, yeah, so, well, if I, if I don't go too deeply into details, it, it is basically supported in, in in some cases it won't work, in some cases it will work. Um, what, what usually happens is that in these countries, uh, in it's espe it happens especially in Western Europe, uh, in these countries uh, the langu their languages are usually supported quite well to begin with, uh, like, like uh, French and German. Uh, but if anybody asks us to support uh, different keyboard layouts, uh, we will definitely support them. Uh, just the, the, the US English keyboard is just the most common default from which we start, but if anybody asks us, just we, we will do it. Yes? You mentioned the comma locale data repository. Yep. Unicode. Um, do your technical staff uh, talk to them? Because yes, we some of the things aren't correct in that one uh, either. I'm, I'm, I, I yes. give an example. Uh, I'm not sure which one is the correct, but on you go to a Wikipedia article <coughs> about the native script names for India, where there's something like yeah. 20 yeah. official languages, <coughs> and I noticed that the, uh, the term for Malaya Lang was different to, in the common locale data repository versus what is on the Wikipedia site. So I don't speak that language. Okay. Uh, that's that. Yes. So that is possible. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, what what happens is that uh, well the question was about the, the CLDR the Common Local uh, Data Repository. It's definitely not perfect. We we know that it's not perfect. Uh, I have found mistakes there about my language, which is Hebrew. Uh, there are many languages uh, uh, about which the information is not complete. Uh, there are many languages about which there are mistakes. Uh, uh, the CLDR, it tries to be kind of crowdsourced process. It, it doesn't work very well. It's very bureaucratic. It's, it's something like that. Uh, it, 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 it has, you, you cannot edit it every day. You can edit it only in particular weeks of year and uh, 
then some changes have to be voted on. It's a very hard bureaucratic process, but we actually work with them. We actually send them uh, a lot of bug reports about their software. We send them suggestions how to improve their software, and we are sending them actual corrections to the data. So if you see any mistake in the CLDR uh, in your language, uh, about languages that you know, uh, you can, uh, if, if you find that talking directly to CLDR is too hard for you, uh, which is quite likely, because it really is hard, please talk to us. Uh, uh, we have pretty good contact with them. Uh, you can submit it to us. I guess I'm a little bit confused what you mean by uh, supporting the language. Does it mean that, let's say, if I'm on Polish Wikipedia, uh, I can somehow get all those extra characters without going to the null center? Uh, yes. Uh, so nobody asked us uh, to, to give any special support for Polish yet, but it's absolutely possible. Uh, so we can create uh, a keyboard layout that will work in Wikipedia uh, without you having to install anything uh, on your computer. So, you c so you'll be, uh, probably if you are in Poland and using a Polish computer, you probably have these characters. But if you are uh, traveling somewhere or if you're living in another country yeah. for some reason. Okay, so if, you, if you're using a computer that doesn't have a Polish keyboard installed, you can either install a Polish keyboard, which means uh, going to some preferences and changing some things, which is quite hard for a lot of people, uh, or you can ask us to add support for that language, and uh, then it will just work in Wikipedia. You just enter Wikipedia, and it, it will be available not just for you, but for everybody who enters that Wikipedia. And you will just type uh, as you are regularly typing in the English keyboard, and you will see Polish characters. We just need the specification for you because we cannot know all languages. So we are working together. We need the data from you, and we implement it. Now, I don't usually edit on uh, Wikipedia. I edit on comments, uh, which is kind of shared by you know all the we languages. The, the, the Any the chances of supporting some of those languages? Absolutely. What we, what, yeah, it's, it's actually already installed on Commons, not for Polish, but we can easily add Polish. Uh, and um, it's, it works on uh, any media wiki installation, uh, which of course means any Wikimedia project, which of includes Commons. Like yes, 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 yes. Um, just speak to me later, I, I'll show you where it is. Great. Yeah, there was a question there? Yes. Uh, uh, last question? Oh, well. There'll be a whole Q&A session, session after that. Don't, don't yeah. give me the last question, give it to somebody else. My question wasn't that, that important. <laughs> we'll have a whole Q&A session in just a few minutes. I was going to ask if, um, for completeness sake, if you guys supported the Dvorak keyboard as well as the QWERTY keyboard for the American we, uh, I expected that question from somebody that just <laughs> had to come. <laughs> uh, it's possible. It's possible. Uh, just give us the spec. Okay. So that was the last question. Uh, uh, the Seabrand is the next speaker. Seabrand is the product manager of uh, localization in Wikimedia. So, Seabrand. All right, good afternoon. Uh, is the audio okay? My name is uh, Sibel Maaslund, as Amir already said. I'm a uh, product manager of localization, which basically means that I am responsible for the feature set of language support within MediaWiki and by extension in uh, the Wikimedia wikis and Wikipedia. Uh, that's something I do together with uh, Alolida Sharma development team and some user interaction designers from uh, the product team at, Wik at the Wikimedia Foundation. Uh, we have a, we're, co we're covering a quite a, a, a big field. Um, MediaWiki, which is the software that, that, that Wikipedia and its sister projects run on. Uh, Wikimedia Foundation has about 800 uh, different wikis uh, in 285 languages, in total about 23 million content pages, 500 million readers, and they read about how many? Yes, 18 billion pages a month. This, these are all monthly numbers, the last three lines, uh, last two lines, sorry. Um, what is language support about? Well, language support is basically about removing language-related la barriers. That can be uh, about readership and it can be about uh, contributions. Um, it consists of internationalization. Internationalization is uh, basically allowing localization. It can be about localization, which is delivering a native uh, language user, uh, uh, a native language user experience. 
It can be about input, how, how you can contribute uh, content to MediaWiki. It can be about output, how do users see content represented. It can also be about translation, uh, facilitating um, making content available in, in multiple languages. Basically, everyone is involved in the field. Uh, readers can report issues, as previous speakers have already indicated. Translators can uh, translate <coughs> content. They can translate user interfaces. Um, uh, our language team can describe, li uh, uh, sorry, language team members can describe uh, language properties like plural rules or um, uh, numerals, uh, the way that they are formatted. Uh, developers can use uh, I18N best practices and I18N developers provide a I18N frameworks that uh, all of the software can then be built on. Um, so translation, um, we support um, with an extension called Translate for MediaWiki, uh, translating documentation and messaging that is being done by the Wikimedia Foundation, as well as documentation on, uh, on MediaWiki.org. Um, it's called the page translation feature. It's enabled on uh, Meta and MediaWiki.org uh, media and Wikimedia Incubator, and it's, um, it facilitates structure, structured multi-user uh, translation. It has a review feature, it has workflow states, um, and uh, I, I will probably do a, a quick demo if I have some time at the end of the uh, presentation. Um, localization, as said, is uh, translating the product for use in a language. Um, the goal is to translate software in as many languages as possible because that adds to our mission of bringing knowledge to everyone uh, on the planet. Um, quality assurance is, is part of it. Uh, we have a source language, which is English, but it doesn't necessarily mean that English is always either correct or complete. Uh, it could be that developers um, uh, assume that uh, a number, for example, is always more than one, which means that it is plural form in English. So we have always more than one boat, that, so it says uh, X boats. That is not necessarily true in many other languages, because if it's three boats in, I don't know, Polish, uh, that is a different form than when it's four boats. So you have to make the software work with those kinds of structures. Um, if you're talking about other users, um, and that user is female or male, um, it, it could mean that there is a prefix or a suffix in a language for a particular uh, word, or uh, maybe the word even looks completely different in, um, in, uh, uh, in, in Dutch, for example, if you're talking about a nurse, uh, a male uh, nurse, uh, that would be a broeder. If you're talking about a female nurse, that would be a, a zuster. Uh, so uh, those are two completely different words. Uh, yeah, so that is the same as sister. Um, true. However, it's also used in a different meaning. Yes? Languages that have many plural forms that don't discriminate between singular and plural. Then you don't have to use it, then you have just one uh, form. implementing any uh, particulars for Thai at the moment. So it could be that no one made us. It could oh, it doesn't have anything to do with priority. The, 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 the problem here is that there are about 7,500 languages classified. We support about 450 of them. Within our team, we speak less than 20 and more than 15. Uh, but it's still not enough. Uh, we need people to make us aware of the particulars of, of languages. Uh, and once they make us aware, then we uh, we can see if they if that uh, those particular properties can be accommodated within the current uh, internationalization framework. And if it cannot, we have to look at how we can uh, extend it to to make that possible. So if you have any um, uh, if you can identify any problems for Thai localization at the moment, uh, which which 
which are indeed problematic, then, then please let us know. Uh, you can file bug reports at bugzilla.wikimedia.org. You can go to translatewiki.net and put it on the support page. Uh, or you can uh, explain to any of our developers uh, you at the conference. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's also about supporting gender and plural forms, as I said. Uh, it's about namespace names and magic words and special page URLs and date and time notation and a lot more lesser known uh, properties. Is that is is does Wikipedia have uh, any software to translate? Is that correct? Um, you are probably talking about translating articles or content, right? Um, no, is the answer. Uh, there are two tools uh, provided by uh, external parties. There is the Google Translate Toolkit uh, and there is Microsoft Wikibasha. Um, those are the only solutions at the moment that facilitate uh, content uh, translation. Uh, within our team, um, pr pr providing tools for content translation is uh, not a priority at the moment. So, when you speak about the translation, what do you mean? When I speak about translation in this context, uh, I speak about, um, and maybe I should demo that. policy uh, or uh, the things like the terms of use. Uh, this is the dashboard for the, uh, can you still hear me if I, if I speak in that direction or should I speak louder? Fine. No? Okay. Um, so in this case there is a group here for policies. Um, let's for example take the uh, closing uh, project policy. Um, this is a display of uh, all the untranslated uh, parts of a page. If I click on this link here, I will go to the Dutch version of this page. And you will see that there are other languages here, like uh, Afrikaans. And this little icon here tells me that it's 14% translated in Afrikaans, 17 in Arabic, in Dutch, 72. In German, it's 83%. In Spanish, it's 100%. So if I would click Spanish, a human being, yeah. So uh, this page has an added history. Uh, so this was uh, translated by Marco Arroyo, mostly in user Ralgis. So multiple people have worked on this. So what is your what is your language? Hebrew. So I can type the language code for Hebrew here to see if there's any any activity uh, in that area. But this kind of translation, they require uh, the support of the underlying software, or is it just? Uh well, what basically uh, happens is um, uh, if, if you, for example, go to this to this wiki page. which is only available in English, and you look at the, at the source. There are some additional uh, tags in here. Uh, one of the things that you see is this languages tag that takes care of the, of the bar with okay. all the translations. And um, what is interesting here that I, that I would expect a translate tag that I don't there see. Was one just below. I, I saw it a moment ago. Yeah, I did too. Uh, however, I see a translatable unit here that, that doesn't have, so someone probably messed up here. Um, so we have this tag here um, that basically uh, 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 signals that translation starts here, where 
you have a closed tag, that's where translation ends. If there are any um, lines uh, of uh, any empty uh, lines in between, that means that uh, uh, a different unit starts there, and the extension adds uh, some uh, identification, which allows us to track the units even if they are moved. Uh, for example, if you would move unit 14 below uh, unit 2 here, then all of the derivative pages would also uh, have that uh, content switched. Now does that uh, uh, software support works uh, right now you're on uh, uh, Meta Wikimedia? Uh, does it work on other, I don't know, commons, let's say? If you would install that extension, yes. uh, which is not installed on commons at the moment, yes. However, it doesn't support all use cases. For example, more complex uh, templated pages uh, are, are not supported in this structure at the moment. You can use some simple template tricks, but uh, nothing, uh, nothing very elaborate. Yeah. Some of the stuff built on comments is very elaborate. Yes, absolutely. Uh, one of the... Um, one of the most elaborate documents that we have are the, the Wikimedia terms of use that are, are they now active? Yeah. Yes. Um, let me decrease the size a little bit. As you can see, this is like translated at least partially in how many of those? Like for 35 to 40 languages? Yeah. Somewhere around there. Some of them complete. Um, uh, if, if you say translate this page, uh, the Dutch for that, then uh, you can you can basically start translating. You can even translate as an anonymous user. Uh, you can also proofread, so approve translations that have been made by others. Um, I only have one um, uh, translation that I can proofread because I personally translated most of the terms of use into Dutch. Um, there are some statistics uh, also for this particular page. Um, Let's see. So here you could see what. Uh, so you can see we have a translation in about 12 languages that are complete. And I see that there's a sorting problem. That's something we should fix. Um, there's also support for, uh, for workflow. Uh, so here, uh, at the white with the white background, you no know, workflow state has been set. Uh, red means in progress. Orange means uh, orange means uh, uh, proofreading or needs updating. Uh, yellow means ready, and gray means published. This looks like a CSS bug. Uh, oh no, gray means published. So this is more of a dashboard that is being used by translation administrators. Uh, regular uh, regular translators use that dashboard about what still needs to be translated in their language. Uh, how to tell if, um, if uh, uh, a word for the mistake is... Um, if uh, something needs uh, to be updated? Yes. If yeah, if something needs to be updated because the source language was changed, it's uh, marked fuzzy, as we call it. Uh, and then it shows up as untranslated, even though there may be a partial translation. And in the derivative page with the translation, it shows up with a red background, so that it's uh, so that that it's identified as being outdated. And then it needs to be yeah, so proofreading at the moment is not a requirement. Um, it is more of a, an informal quality assurance stage, but it does, of course, proofreading does improve. And it is registered, so there, uh, we are planning on on adding some some uh, formal workflow engine uh, to that. Especially, for example, when changing a published page, back uh, when you make a change to a published pa a published page, uh, that should no longer remain the workflow state because it needs to be republished. For example. Is there functionality for a translator to say, I'll translate it this way? It's a wiki. Uh, if you don't agree, then you should change it. That's so. No, no. That's that sounds like uh, unneeded workflow overhead. It's it's a wiki. If you think it needs to be different, I think he was just trying to say to draw to draw attention to that particular change. Yeah. 
Like I'm not 100 percent sure that I translate this right. Can somebody else look at it? Use use the top page. Yeah. The yeah. Pages, yeah. Yeah. I don't. I personally, I don't really see any added value in adding complicating features. Should try and make it simpler, even if possible. You were raising your hand. Yes, I was curious as to where it pulled the list of languages from. Hold on, again. Where does it pull the list of languages from? Where does what pull its list that of languages? That page that you're showing us with the ah. workflow. Where does um, it list of languages? Well, it it knows which uh, which translations are present, so it can generate that list. Okay. And uh, and uh, or or did you mean? Uh, where do the translated language names themselves come from? Uh, I was curious as to where you guys get your list of languages. Ah, we get them from the common local uh, data repository okay. of Unicode. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. So it's CLDR data. Yeah. You might have mentioned that in the last presentation. Any other questions before I continue? So after localization, uh, before you can localize, can properly localize, you need to internationalize, which is making your software ready for use in, in multiple languages. Um, that means that you have actually translatable messages. There are different ways to do that. Within the Wikimedia, uh, Media Wiki ecosystem, we use uh, key value pairs. So there is a, uh, like a placeholder present in, in, in the code, and uh, there are lookup uh, routines in the software that get the right language for a string. If that is not present in a language, we get the English string, or there are more elaborate fallback mechanisms. For example, if you um, uh, use a, a localization in Ukrainian, and the string is present not in Ukrainian, but it is present in Russian, then we present it in Russian. If it's not present in Russian, we present the English string. That, that is called a, f a fallback chain. <coughs> Yes. So, so the African, I can't find uh, is that is that a tool server message group? Sorry? Is that a tool server message group? Yes. Is that okay? Um, I usually commit those uh, over the weekend, and in the past weekend, I uh, while I was traveling, mm -hmm. I was here in DC, uh, so I haven't done it. Uh, so the last time that was done was the weekend before last. Um, I'm planning on doing it doing it somewhere during this Wikimania, but. Uh, so it's in the queue, I guess, uh, for, for MediaWiki proper, uh, uh, with regards to MediaWiki, uh, uh, for MediaWiki proper, with regards to Wikimedia wikis. Too much wiki, too much media. Um, yeah, Brian, why, who invented that? Sorry. <laughs> um, it, it is usually available within 24 hours. For example, if you, um, at six o'clock in Europe, make a translation. Uh, Raymond Specking uh, usually ensures that it's committed to the software by 10 o'clock. And around four o'clock at night, there is a, a job running on the Wikimedia wikis that, that get that translation live. So then you have like a, 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 a cycle of less than 10 hours. We usually tell translators that it's about 36 hours. And by that time, their efforts should be visible within the Wikimedia ecosystem. And that is a pretty quick uh, turnaround time. So uh, just to expand on that answer, you have to distinguish between MediaWiki, uh, the software that runs our sites, and any other client of localization. For MediaWiki, we really put a lot of effort into automating the process of pulling in the translations. But if you look at external or peripheral parts of the ecosystem, like the tool server, then it's still a more manual process. Thank you, Eric. Um, so uh, Amir told you, uh, and, and I'm, I, I think I'm going to like skip most of this, and if there are any questions about input methods and Orion, uh, then uh, please let me know. I have some stats. Uh, at the moment, uh, the input methods are active on uh, 38 Wikimedia wikis, 
Uh, we support input methods for 51 languages and we have 58 input methods in total, so that means that we have more uh, functionality at the moment than is being used within our ecosystem. So there is uh, some additional communication and convincing to be done. For example, some communities still prefer their own uh, self-maintained input methods over um, the standardized uh, input methods. Uh, some uh, communities don't really know what we're doing. Uh, even though we have tried to, to get into contact with them, those are, well, the, the communication uh, problems that we experience uh, basically everywhere uh, when it comes to our ecosystem. Um, one uh, very clear example of what web fonts do, um, some of you may have seen uh, this before, uh, web fonts ensures that it becomes something like this. And even though you can't read it, this is like a proper representation of a script and text in that script. Uh, we are at the moment we support uh, 19 scripts with web fonts and it's active in uh, 51 wiki wikis of the Wikimedia Foundation. Uh, so then uh, a little bit more about, uh, about our roadmap. Um, we are uh, at the moment working uh, on a universal language uh, selector. We want to make selection of language uh, easier. Um, we also want to make sure that um, our software gets a little bit smarter and listens a bit more to what your web browser already tells us. For example, if it tells us that you are, um, your preferred language is German, uh, it's kind of stupid that we respond to you with a user interface in English or in Hindi for that matter, if you go to Hindi Wikipedia. Um, it's. Uh, it's very uh, logical to provide you with a user interface in German if your browser tells us that that is your preferred language. Uh, and we like would. An English Wikipedia website? Sorry? You mean like if you're an English Wikipedia and you said that your preference is German? Then you get a user interface in, the, in German and you get your content obviously in English because it's English Wikipedia. Yeah. 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 And we would like to be persistent, um, even for anonymous users. So if you, as an anonymous user, are, uh, have a browser that says, I want it in German, you're, you initially would get it in German. If you then override that using a language selector and set it to French, we would like that to stick with you in French with English content. Uh, it would be, uh, we're, in, we're currently envisioning it to be cookie based. So after 30 days, you would have to do that again if you remain anonymous. If you have a user account, it would be stored, of course, as a preference, uh, which means that it stays with you until you change it. Um, the Wikimedia Foundation is looking into creating something called a global profile. I don't really know where on the roadmap that is. Maybe Eric, it's, uh, it looks like that may take another while. So if your question would be, does this work when I go to another wiki, the answer will probably be no, uh, unless we have a global profile and those preferences could be global. Um, we want to adapt and improve. Uh, we have something called Project Milkshake. It's a very young project at the moment. It aims to um, imagine a world in which every single open source project can freely have great internationalization. It's a little bit of pun, of course, on our mission as the Wikimedia Foundation. Uh, but it is a dual licensed GP GPL MIT um, set of libraries uh, that is non media wiki uh, dependent, reusable, and setting standards. And it will have modules like uh, feature rich interna internationalization in JavaScript, it will have a, the language selector that we spoke about, it will have the input methods and the web fonts. And uh, it is our little gift to the world and of course, another attempt to conquer it. Of course, we also want to streamline. Um, we want to, uh, uh, as, a, as an internationalization team, uh, keep on uh, growing awareness uh, about internationalization with uh, developers. Um, we would really like to see um, an I-89 and L10 code review uh, mandatory before features go live on our wikis because we think that may help the awareness a lot and uh, and, and, and 
uh, help us catch problems be bef before they hit the hit the hit our infrastructure instead of after, which means the, uh, if they are discovered after that that causes uh, translators to uh, to have to redo their work. For example, uh, we're going to look into i eighteen n for mobile and the visual editor. And uh, you are uh, very welcome uh, to follow our development. Uh, we are working uh, with a, a Scrum-based Agile process. It's very open. We have two-week sprints. Uh, every two weeks, we do a sprint demo in which we um, uh, tell you about delivered functionality, what is going to be planned for the next sprint, and some other news. There's 20 minutes for inter interactive discussion, just like the forum that we're going to uh, do here. You can uh, subscribe to the MediaWiki i18n mailing list. Uh, I'm sending out invitations there every two weeks. Um, we, we're using the software Mingle uh, to plan of all, our, all of our work. That's completely open, no hidden features, nothing. You can see everything we do. Um, I made a short link. Uh, it's hexm.de slash jp. Uh, we have regular office hours and bug triages on IRC about one a, one a month. So you can interact with us at least uh, three times uh, every month. And of course, we're all hanging out on IRC, et cetera. Uh, my calls to action, help us with translations, be a volunteer developer, or help us change the world and get paid for it too. Um, yeah, that is it. Thank you for your attention. So we have uh, 19 minutes left in this session. I would like to ask uh, Santos Stottingal, uh, internationalization developer, Pau Geiner, uh, UI UX um, designer, uh, Nicholas Lackstrom, internationalization developer, Amir Aharoni, internationalization developer, and Arun Ganesh, and Alolida Sharm. Where's Arun? Yes. Ah, Arun Ganesh, inter uh, user interaction designer, uh, interface designer, and Alolida Sharma. Director of Engineering to answer whatever questions that you have. No. Go ahead. I've, I've done enough talking, so I'll try to shut up for the rest of it. Thank you. Be moderator. So who wants to start off? Can we walk around with these microphones? Um, why is why does uh, editing interface messages on the language dependent Wikipedias require administrator an administrator account that seems like a very good way to hold back mm -hmm. translations Nicholas, do you want to answer that question? Uh, there's actually two reasons. First is that uh, some of those messages uh, <coughs> include directly in the HTML output, which means that you can do all kinds of nasty stuff like track users. And that's something we don't uh, can't allow. And another reason is that we want translation translations to be done at translatewiki.net because from there they can go to every MediaWiki installation and not just in the Wikipedia they are in. Does that answer your question? Yeah, that's perfectly okay. acceptable answer. Uh, yeah. I think I forgot what I wanted to ask. Um, but I, I you used to have uh, translator thons or translate marathons. Uh, do you still do that? Yes, we do. Um, but we never announce them because uh, we don't want people to, uh, to not be active until the translation rally starts. Uh, we have a great sponsor for that, which is Wikimedia Netherlands. And um, there may be one soon, or it may take a little bit longer, but it's definitely going to happen again. Okay, my final question is, um, I joined Wiki, Wikipedia because I wanted to edit. And then you put an extra burden, if, if I want to put it that way, for me to translate. 
and um, I'll probably choose to edit instead of translating more. How do you how do you encourage people to view translating as part of their editing? Because mm -hmm. I found it a bit difficult to adjust to that uh, balance. Uh, I started in 2008, I started translating almost in 2009, and at some point I did go dead because um, trans I mean, editing was became a somewhat more important for me than translating. Okay. How do you encourage people, firstly, to find the balance between the two and to make sure that work doesn't fall off uh, translating? Okay, who wants to take that? Uh, I'll try to take that, uh, even though it's a bit complicated. Uh, well, uh, I'm not sure what you mean by burden, uh, but basically uh, to start a new project in a new language, uh, it is a requirement to translate a certain number of most important messages. Uh, in fact, it's, it's about 500 messages. It's uh, not supposed to be a burden. If you, if you really think that it's a burden, then we want to know that because Translating 500 messages, uh, it seems to me that it's a lot easier than writing a, a Wikipedia article. Uh, because you have all the information, it's, it's 500 short messages, you translate them and you're done. That's, that's uh, as far as requirements go. Uh, uh, and the, uh, everything else should be translated after that. It's not forced, but it should be translated because um, people who want to edit Wikipedia in that language uh, but don't know English, uh, they, it will be very hard for them because uh, all the interface will be in English and they simply won't be able to use it. Now, if you prefer uh, writing and not translating, this is fine. Uh, whatever you can do as a volunteer uh, is, is welcome, uh, really. Um, it's Bring your friends. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So. Um, we, it's, it's not forced. Um, uh, there are some policies here and there that uh, ex uh, a new extension uh, can be installed in, in your Wikipedia uh, only if it's completely translated. Because, again, uh, if it's installed but it's in, in English, only people who know English will be able to use it. But your project is done in a different language. Uh, so, so installing an English translation there doesn't completely make sense. Uh, you, you should just really find your friends. You should, uh, the, the best idea really is to find people who really strongly care about the, the language, uh, linguists who work with that language, teachers of that language. Uh, it's quite often there are young people, uh, children, who really uh, who like get all uh, A's uh, in, in the native language classes in school, uh, and they really want to translate. This happens quite often. Uh, if you want to write articles, it's absolutely perfectly fine. Uh, just grow the community, then eventually there will be people who will want to translate. Are you okay with that answer? I'm okay with it. Uh, I asked that question because unfortunately I... I Do you feel guilty for not translating? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, no, I mean seriously, like, like, the, that, like that, that is, like Amir says, it's fine. Like, we are, we are fortunate to have you do anything you do. Yeah, as I said, the, the, on, the, the reason I asked that question is unfortunately I, I'm the only editor for Stronger Wikipedia. I'm the only translator for Stronger Wikipedia. Mm -hmm. We've done eight, uh, well, I've done 500 translations on Stronger Wikipedia. I've done 250 uh, articles on the Stronger Wikipedia. And that sort of adds up. And you you should tell Jimmy. who does that, <laughs> yeah. then out at some point. You know, so yeah. Someone who wants to do the same thing like I'm doing, some, somehow find a balance. Yeah, it seems to me. Yeah, well, go, go. What we can do is to help you also get the word out in terms of you know other community yeah. members across communities who perhaps have, have the same language yeah. skills as you. And if you are in a situation where you are an only editor or the only translator, please get the message out to others who could. Are there, are there any outreach people in the room from chapters or the foundation? Yeah, you, you, you talk to this man. Mm -hmm. and I had uh, an answer in his question, but uh, Lolita gave some uh, bit uh, answer to my future question. Uh, 
uh, we have got uh, uh, nearly 130 live languages uh, in my small country, and uh, among them, only three three languages have uh, pages on Wikipedia, and there are nearly eight languages in incubation. And uh, can't we transfer the uh, interface of Nepali to to those uh, uh, languages in incubation? Request for an application. Um, I like a mobile app where you can just um, take Wikipedia and then you tap your desired language and you record an elder speaking, a video, or an audio of the elder speaking, and you click stop. And that automatically clicks, hooks the video or audio file to. Uh, with an interwiki link to language Wikipedia. And then um, people who have languages that are very hard to type, it's no problem. They can automatically populate their Wikipedias. Who wants to answer that? <laughs> well, uh, well I, I'll answer that. Um, uh, so the, the idea is good. Uh, we are not the mobile team. Uh, there is a mobile team. Uh, I, I understand their connection to languages. Uh, this is just not a part of our engineering expertise. Uh, the mobile team uh, can certainly be interested in that. Uh, that's uh, yet another thing that you should open in Bugzilla, bugzilla.wikimedia.org. Uh, that's where you ask for enhancements to the current software. Um, the, the, the people who will do the mobile parts will, pr will, will probably be the mobile team. I think that you met them yesterday. Um, if, if, there's, if there's a particular language component, we can probably do it at some point where, where, when it makes sense. Hello. Uh, uh, may I ask you if there are any plans to extend the set of buttons for editing wiki articles with some buttons specifically related to translation? Let me give you just one example. Every time I translate an article, uh, let's say from fr French to Ukrainian, there are a lot of words in square brackets which refer to articles already created. And these articles may probably have their Ukrainian versions, or not Ukrainian, or if I translate into Russian, Russian versions. So this is to say, is it possible that when I click, for example, the button translate, a bot automatically searches those words in square brackets for versions of these articles in Russian and automatically translates names of those articles into Russian? You Otherwise, what happens? Otherwise, people have to invent those words or terms from a scrap. And uh, the, in the best case, we have red links. In the worst case, we have just a verbal translation that means nothing. So the short answer is no and yes. <laughs> uh, the longer answer is um, uh, uh, no. Uh, you will, you cannot expect those buttons uh, because this is not on our roadmap. We are not investing at the moment in uh, tools for content uh, translation. Um, uh, the yes is to, uh, can I have a bot to do this or that? Of course you can create that bot. Okay. Uh, but it's not going to yeah. be done yeah. by, by this team. Okay. Sorry, I mean, can I answer this guy because... Can you, yeah, if Eric, can you take the microphone? If because they are doing recording. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I want to answer this guy because we have just do this his job. I mean, in Persian Wikipedia, we have, I mean, we have a person. Okay, we have a person written a JavaScript. 
So you can just, I don't know, go to English Wikipedia or German or somewhere else and see if this article is written, I mean, if these blue mm, links in the English Wikipedia are also in Persian Wikipedia or not. And he just translate them to your own language. I can show you when you oh, want. Thank you. So thank it's, you. it's happening. I mean, we have that. But I don't know if uh, the localization team wants this kind of objects or not. Sure. It doesn't fit into, into, our, uh, into our work. Uh, what I would advise you is if you are a developer, uh, I'm not a developer myself, but I've seen it. But it's, if done. someone else is, yeah. try and productize this, submit it, and uh, especially if there's something like concrete, we will help you review it and assess it, and if it is good, we will get it in. Sigrun, uh, could you put up the uh, Wikibasha URL very quickly? So, it's correct that uh, content translation is not within the scope of what the international translation folks are doing. Um, there are multiple reasons for that. Um, it's very important when you think about conceptually about translation to really draw a clear separation between the process of translating a document like the terms of use where you want to maintain exact coherence between the multiple versions of that document and translating a Wikipedia article where you actually may want to make very specific changes uh, from the original document and where documents are certainly going to diverge in the long run. These are very different types of content translation. So in the process of um, translating a document like the terms of use, the software that the internationalization team has developed, the translate extension, is very well suited to do this because it takes the document, segments it into paragraphs, uh, records translation memories for your translations, so you can reuse identical translations, detects differences between the documents, it highlights them in the translation so you can see, okay, there's a divergence, and I need to update my translation in order to make sure that it stays in sync with the original. So it's a very different kind of translation where you want to make sure that among the 30 translations of the terms of use, they are all exact straightforward translations of the original. Whereas in the process of taking a Wikipedia article and let's say making a Hindi translation, you might want to add different types of sources, you might want to take out some images, add different images, structure it differently, and it's certainly going to change over time. So it's completely different as a scenario. Uh, this is a project by the Microsoft research folks. Uh, it's actually now a couple years old. and don't know how actively it is maintained. It is, however, open source software with the exception of the machine translation component. And what it actually is designed to do is to enable cross-language collaboration as opposed to translation. So if you want to take pieces from English Wikipedia, French Wikipedia, Russian Wikipedia, and uh, create an article in German Wikipedia, it facilitates that process. You can collect from those different languages, copy and paste, use the machine translation to augment your human translation, and then create a new original article in a different language. And this is actually partially based on the lessons that Microsoft drew and partially on the lessons that Google drew through their translation efforts, which were literal uh, direct translation is actually not that desirable in a Wikipedia context. You don't want to just do a straightforward one-on-one -on -one transfer from one language to another. You want to adopt, you want to localize, you want to adapt. Um, so it's, it's a complex process. This tool is pretty interesting. It gives you sort of a side-by-side -side view where you can uh, effectively work with two languages, but you can switch the original language and have uh, content go into the target language. It's the most interesting approach that I've seen so far to actually enable real cross-language collaboration. And I think that's sort of the direction that we have to go if we want to do that as opposed to just integrating like machine translation and making it easy to write a one-on-one -on -one translation. I, wa I want to ask one uh, very likely follow-up question, like why is Microsoft Research doing this? Uh, the answer here is to train their uh, machine translation because when you use this, um, they will compare their prediction with your actual translation. So there is a what's in it for them. But the what's in it for me is that you get a tool that is actually very usable uh, and uh, you, can, you can change it yourself or you can have the developer change it. So like there is, there is very little um, uh, hidden agenda here, uh, uh, so I want to make that explicit. We have time for one more question, and I'll, if anyone has a question about design, uh, then I would like that person to answer that question, because our designers 
uh, having so far <laughs> yeah, participated in this. Uh, yeah. Do we have two more minutes? Yeah. So a question about design? Or are you guys all happy with that? Like Wikipedia rocks. It's easy, <laughs> accessible. If you want to talk to someone, it's like as easy as in Facebook. If you, have to, if you want like chat. Yeah. Okay. Well, any other question then? Yeah, 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 maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. I, I have a question about uh, where we can find the results of your good work in providing this infrastructure. Yeah, what so I had in mind was <coughs> some sort of a table where <coughs> you could see a language and then maybe you would see a check mark to see if there was an input method for, for the language, whether there was a web font for the language, whether there's transliteration, or, or any other sorts of things that the, the programmers would know the status and the end users would know that there is something that could possibly be used. pretty poor. Uh, thank you everyone for being here. We are really out of time. Um, we'll keep on being very passionate in working for our languages. Um, don't hesitate to ask any of us here at the conference, send us a mail, participate in our sprint demos. See you, see you again soon.